they're going to be one of the main characters, and then you adjust accordingly. Excellent. Um, do you find that in building your characters, like, is that something that just seems like it's more in your kind of, you know, in, in your wheelhouse, your strong zone? Is that why you're sort of attentive to the plot and the turning points and the act breaks and things like that, but character it sounds like you just kind of have a feel for it and that's your strength as a writer? I, I think so. I mean, I, I love character. I... I spend maybe weeks working on the characters, and I get to know them so well that I know that any situation I make up, any anything that I put them in, I know how they're going to react. And so by knowing my characters up front, it makes the writing so much easier. So, Lisa, how do you get to know your characters so well? You just mentioned that you sort of it takes weeks to play with them, meet them, expand them. What does that look like for you? What's your process on that front? Um, generally, for them, I'll uh, come up with a word that defines them. For example, in Millicent and Girl Genius, the word was lonely. And I'll do like a post-it note, and I'll put it on my computer. And so I'll always go back to that word. And then I know that at the end of the book, that word is going to change because that character is going to change. So that's something about them. But um, it really is little bits and pieces. I'll start thinking about them, and I'll think, well, what do they do? What do they like to do when they're alone? What are they scared of? What are their secrets? How do they act? And you know, and and it's just it's layer upon layer until they're fully formed. And this doesn't necessarily always find its way into the book, but yet it's kind of that iceberg theory of writing that it's supporting what's underneath your characters. Is that what you're kind of talking about? Exactly. You need to know them inside and out. You need to know more about them than they know about themselves in order to write about them fully. And is this just for the protagonist, or how many character? How deeply do you take this? Your antagonist, primary, sort of the friends, mentor figures, things like that. How how many people do you know this intimately? I I know them all pretty well. Um, the antagonists I know very very well because I'm 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 very interested in in the the antagonist, the bully, you know, the enemy of the protagonist, and what their motivations are and what makes them who they are. In fact, you know, I have a series of four books, starting with Millicent Men, followed by Stanford Wong Flunk's Big Time, so totally Emily Evers, and then Warp Speed. And in those four books, you see characters have their own book, you see them step back and be maybe a side character to somebody else's story. So you never know when you're writing which character may want to take over later or merit their own novel. That's interesting because I um, sort of, when I give do writing workshops, I talk about the antagonist is, in a way, very much the engine of your story because they're the ones that push your hero, your you know protagonist, to reach deeper and, and face their fears and do things that they certainly probably wouldn't have broken out of their comfort zone and willingly embraced if it wasn't for those forces of antagonism. You kind of, does that resonate with you? Oh, exactly. I mean, your protagonist is only as good as the antagonist and the person tugging at them. And when they're evenly matched, you have a much stronger story. That is so, so, so well said right there, is that your your protagonist is only as good as your antagonist in that way. I, I love...